Hey everyone, this is Some Nerdy Guy back again with another video. Today's video is just going to be a discussion video because I feel like I don't do enough of those. I mainly just do a bunch of pickup videos, show you, the, hey, I got a game. Here's a little sneak peek of the next one. I got this one. Do a lot of those. I just kind of wanted to talk about all the stuff that's being announced because we've just been getting bombarded with just tons of announcements announcements especially this past week we had a nintendo direct we had a sony state of play or playstation state of play and then this week was tokyo game show and there's just like tons of announcements all across the board just everybody announcing crap left right and center uh and i just kind of wanted to talk about the stuff i was excited for so first thing the nintendo direct there was a lot of uh back and forth on was the direct good was it bad um i try not to like dwell too much on like how uh like as a whole up up or down like is it really good is it really bad i mean there's ones that are less less exciting than others but there's always something i'm excited for it every single one of them there's at least one thing where i'm like oh like not literally jumping out of my seat but i'm just like oh that's so cool uh but this one was definitely for me and a lot of other people out there i'm sure people who even watch this channel it was JRPG heavy. And I think that's what a lot of people were upset about because there weren't a lot of the uh, like number one Nintendo IPs that were just like just like firing off, which I feel like this wouldn't have, this isn't the Nintendo Direct for that. I I would think this time of year wouldn't be for that. Like I know the holidays are coming, all that kind of stuff, but I just didn't think that's what they were really that that wasn't the mindset they had for this one. Um but yeah, lots of JRPGs. We got the Fire Emblem Engage game, um, which looks really cool. I like the concept of like this new character. It looks like he has a ring and he's able to bring the spirits back from past characters because Marth is in there, but he's like a spirit form. And I'm like, that's cool. That's a way to bring back the old characters, the, pe the characters that a lot of people like a lot. And um, And then they announced a special edition for that, which I was like, you better not put it on the my nintendo thing like don't do that again <laughs> they were like we'll have later de details later about this special edition i'm just like i swear i swear like the whole thing with the xenoblade 3 collector's edition that was an absolute mess and i'm glad that they learned from their lesson at least for this one in particular because they they had it up for pre-order at gamestop and i was just like all right five dollars down done don't have to worry about it uh i was really uh, excited about that uh, we got Octopath Traveler 2. Uh, that looks really good. There's a special edition for that too, but it's exclusive to Square Enix's website, and it's $180. That is a bit steep. I don't know what all is going to come in it. I don't know if they revealed everything, um, but it comes in a decent-sized box from what it looks like. You get acrylic figures of all the characters. You get a soundtrack, art book, and there's got to be more. For it to be $180, there's got to be more. Unless if the cost is mostly in the acrylic figures. Because I know in Japan you can buy acrylic figures of like tons of stuff. And they're like 10 bucks a piece. And if you get every single character for one. One for every character. I worded that like garbage. But <laughs> uh, yeah, that, I guess that would be expensive. Uh, but there is that. There was the various Daylife game. I thought that looked kind of interesting. It was made by the same creators as Bravely Default. It was the same art style and everything. The one thing that's getting me about all these Square Enix games that are coming out, they have, like, I don't know if they're set in the same universe, but they either have the same sort of art style or just the way the logo is made looks identical. Like, oh, like Triangle Strategy, Octopath Traveler, Bra Bravely Default, it's, like, white text with a line under it. And I, it's, like, all the same. And I'm not really liking that personally unless if they are set in the same universe and maybe there's going to be like a multiverse of madness with rpg characters i'm like okay that'd be pretty cool i'd be down for that but i doubt that's what they're doing so i don't know it's just kind of weird to me that they're just like putting them all they're just doing cookie cutter co copy paste this like font with the white line under and i don't know i think it's weird personally uh but there was that they were showing off um sparks of hope i thought that was kind of cool i probably won't get that game day one um i will get it eventually i saw that they're putting rayman in and i was like okay you got me there i kind of like that uh but that game 
I remember when the first one came out, it went down to like 20 bucks, like within the first couple months to a year that it was out. So I was like, I'll probably wait on Sparks of Hope. It's a Ubisoft game, so that's why. But uh, yeah, I'll wait on that. But then they announced Pikmin 4. I could not believe, I thought it wasn't coming, at least not for a while, because they kept saying like, oh, we're working on it. Oh, we're working on it. And it's like, are you really though? <laughs> but uh, they brought Miyamoto on. And when they did, I was like, okay, okay. This has to be something about Pikmin because he hasn't talked about Mario in a long time and he hasn't talked about Zelda in a long time. Uh, they usually have other producers do it. Um, and he started talking about Pikmin Bloom. And I was like, okay, this game came out like a year ago, I think. It was a while ago. And he's just going on and on and on about Pikmin Bloom. He's like explaining how the entire game works. And I was just like, buddy, we get it. Like it's a mobile game, looks kind of neat. Not a lot, of, I'm guessing it's because not a lot of people were playing it. So they were trying to get people to want to download it. Cause like, oh, it's like Pokemon Go. Well, it's really not. Uh, <laughs> I was playing it when it first came out and I stopped because they don't let you uh, get coins by just playing the game. You have to use real money to get coins to then, cause I maxed out all my Pikmin. I, I had as many Pikmin as I could have. I maxed it out and I was like, okay, I just have to get more storage. How do I get coins? And you have to pay real money. Unless if there's a new update that came out that you don't have to do that. Uh, but when I was playing it, there was no other way to get coins. So I was like, nope, I'm not paying money for a mobile game. Like any, no, not doing it. So I deleted it. But anyways, uh, so we had Pikmin 4. Of course, The Legend of Zelda, uh, the Breath of the Wild sequel finally got a title. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom, which that looks really, really good. Uh, they didn't show a whole lot of gameplay. A lot of people were upset by that, but I I just don't, I don't think they're trying to reveal too much about it. I'm sure that, I mean, it's a Zelda game. Like, there's things that you know to expect in a Zelda game, um, but I'm sure there's probably some surprises up their sleeve that they're just not wanting to reveal until they probably do an entire direct for Zelda closer to the release of the game is probably what I'm thinking. I think that was more of the point to that was just to give people the title of the game and the release date. Um, but it wasn't only Nintendo that announced stuff. There was also a state of play that happened. And um, there was a couple things that I was excited for. There was a uh, Stellar Blade. There was like two like weeby Japanese games that I was excited for that nobody else was when I was talking about it with my friends. Uh, but there was uh, Stellar Blade, which looked really cool. And, uh, oh man, I'm blanking on the other one. Shoot, I can't remember what it was. Uh, Sin Dynamic something. Uh, someone's going to correct me. I can't even, I should have re rehearsed this a little better before. <laughs> I just, I just turned on the camera and started, just started talking. Um, uh, shoot, I can't remember what the name of it is. I think I'm close, but it's uh, you play as a character and you're in a mech and it's like a third person shooter type game. And you have this AI that's, of course, an anime girl uh, and she kind of is like guiding you and like telling you stuff and everything. I don't know. It looked cool to me. It was in 4K. Um, man, that's bothering me that I can't remember the name of it. Uh, Sin Duality. That's what it was called. Sin Duality. I thought it looked cool. Uh, Tekken 8 was announced. Uh, Tekken 8 looks cool. I'm not the biggest into fighting games, I'll play them and I'll buy them. Uh, but I'm not like a day one type of thing. Just like wait till it goes on sale and then I'll try it out. Which for most people, if you're into fighting games, isn't the best way to do it. Because if you're like com playing competitively online, you have to basically be there day one with everybody else and like progress through the game with everybody else. Uh, but that's just not me. I, I'm not that competitive about it. I The only game fighting game that I'll buy day one is Smash Bros. And uh, that's that's my jam, Smash Bros. Uh, but they had that. Of course, they showed God of War. God of War looks incredible. I still haven't played the uh, most recent one that was on the PS4. I know. I just There's a lot of the AAA games that just kind of go over my head. And uh, I'm like, oh, I'll get it. I'll get it eventually. And then I just kind of, meh, <laughs> I forget or whatever. Um but yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, they announced a controller that just kind of looked, eh, 
they like changed the color and they put a little sticker that has like two wolves on it and i was like couldn't couldn't do any anything different anything like better than that i don't know I, it still looks cool the colors is cool but uh just wasn't for me i guess and um trying to think of anything else either or the nintendo um at tokyo game show though I'm, i was trying to save it but i gotta talk about it they announced i remember earlier this month konami said that they were bringing back a dead friend a dormant franchise they were bringing one back for modern audiences and i was just like everybody was like metal gear they're gonna do metal gear and then the the survival horror people were like silent hill they're bringing back silent hill they're gonna do it and then me i'm just like both of those would be awesome. I lean more towards Silent Hill. I would. I really wish they would bring that back, just because of how popular survival horror games are now. Like they would just make hand over fist if they just remastered a game or like completely remastered it, like they've been doing with the Resident Evil games, which that's been insane. Uh, I'll actually touch on uh, that because that's coming to the Switch, and I'm pissed off about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was Sui Coden. They're bringing back Sui Coden 1 and 2. They're doing HD remasters of Sui Coden 1 and 2. I was more excited about that. I never would have thought in a million years they would bring back Sui Coden ever. And the fact that that's what they went with, I was like, no way. And the fact that they put two, like they could have probably gotten away with just doing a remake of the first game and everybody would still have been excited. The fact that they're packing it in with Sui Coden 2, which is one of the not maybe not one of the most expensive, but it's an expensive game on the PS1. It's like 300 plus dollars. So the fact that they're packing both of them in together, it's just chef's kiss. I'm so excited for that. And I hope that it gets a physical release, possibly through limited run, because they kind of have like a partnership with Konami right now. They did the Castlevania collection and then they did uh, the Contra collection. And then they're doing, well, Konami didn't do Shredder's Revenge, but they had the Kawabunga collection, uh, which wasn't limited run. But I, I don't know, like they're doing physical releases for all these games. So I'm hoping that Sui Koden gets one also. Um, but going back to the Resident Evil thing, I am more than happy to have those games on the Switch. No problem there. That's fine. I, I, I actually want that. Um, the problem is they're putting it through the cloud. Okay, Nintendo. You gotta realize something. Now everybody's got like the toppest tier internet connection. Like if you play any game through the cloud, you have to have like really good internet or else it's just not gonna run correctly. Um, I, maybe I'm wrong about that, but that's what I've heard from everybody else. I have not tried cloud gaming at all whatsoever, but they put Resident Evil 7, Resident Evil 8, and then the remakes of two and three all on the Switch. And I was super excited until they said that. They're just like, through the cloud. Because I remember I was getting flashbacks of the uh, Kingdom Hearts games. They put those on the Switch. And everybody was like, oh my god, they finally did it. And they put it on the cloud. And it's like, why? Like, I get it that they're big games. But there's other ones that you've done. Like Bioshock, Borderlands, off the top of my head. Where you have or a lot of the collections, you have one of the games on the cart itself. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know how a lot of technology works. Maybe one of those games was already too big to put on a cartridge, but uh, which very, mel very well may be because those are pretty um, like really graphic heavy games. Um, but they put like one game on the cart and then the rest you have to download and it'll say like, hey, you need an SD card because these are really big downloads just do that like th there's got to be a way to fit one of them on a cartridge like there's no way that you have to put every single one of them on the cloud like or just section them off two and two like do the resident evil two and three collection on a physical and then seven and eight do on a physical because that's what they did for zero and one and then uh actually four five and six were all on a thing together i was just like why can't you just do that those games were big those are big four five and six were big games like just just put one on a cartridge and then the rest of you just download it. Like, why is that so hard to do? Why do you got to hate your fans? Like you just hate us. <laughs> like, I don't get it. Um, but yeah, that was really annoying to see that. Um, and I'm trying to think of anything else. Uh, to, I'm not super big into Xbox anymore. I don't really know if they announced anything of merit 
during this stuff. I think they were at Tokyo Game Show. Um, nothing. This wasn't announced at the Tokyo Game Show, but um, it got announced during the whole thing because uh, we all knew Persona 5 was coming to the Switch and they announced a collector's edition for that, but it was only available on Atlas's website. And I thought for sure it was going to be sold out by the time I got to it, but it luckily was not. So if you got, if anybody who's watching this that likes Persona and are excited about the Switch version, definitely try to get your hands on that. Because I don't think it'll last long. It probably won't last up until the release of the game. Because uh, a lot of people are into Persona and probably going to try to pre-order that. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think of anything else during the Nintendo Direct. Because there were a lot. Uh, um, one, uh, Harvest Moon or Story of Seasons, whatever you want to call it. Wonderful Life is getting a remake or a remaster. That looks really good. Um, I hope they do a little special edition box for that because I know they did it for Mineral Town and Olive Town. Uh, those were really cool, just little boxes. I hope they do one for Wonderful Life. Um, they showed a bit of gameplay for the SpongeBob game, which that looks really good. I'm, I'm a SpongeBob aficionado. Maybe not game-wise, but show-wise. I love SpongeBob. Um, and I think that's really it that I wanted to talk about. I'm sure there are other games... Because they did a lot of, like, sizzle reels. Oh! Just came into my head. Tales of Symphonia. They're doing an HD remaster of Tales of Symphonia. I'm so excited for that. That is one of the best RPGs on the GameCube. They did a remake for the PS3. I never played that one. I only ever played the GameCube version. And right when it was announced during the uh, Nintendo Direct, they put um, a physical release up on Bandai Namco's website, and you can get a steelbook with it, as well as, like, character cards. And stuff like that so that's really exciting uh i'm glad that tales of symphonia is coming back i think tales in general is just like a really good series and i think some more people are getting into it now because of arise because arise did so well uh and it is a great game so hopefully they kind of pick up on that with like doing remakes or remasters of some of the older Tales series. Tales of Destiny, please. Tales of Destiny. Can we get Tales of Destiny? I don't want to pay $200 for a PS1 game. <laughs> I really don't. Um, but I would love to, to play it. Um, and yeah. And I think that's it. I'm pretty sure that's all like the big stuff that I was excited for. Like I said, they had like different here and there sizzle reel stuff that looked cool but i just can't remember everything off the top of my head if i made better videos i probably would have just wrote it down and had like everything like sectioned out but I, this is just a ramble video to be honest with you i just wanted to talk about just turn on the camera and just just blab about whatever i was excited about and i think i pretty much hit all the notes that uh the stuff i was excited for and yeah if you like the video like comment subscribe i like good stuff um, I do want to make a pickup video soon because I'm getting some some cool stuff uh, as it's been released, things like that. Found some stuff at my last trip to the flea market because uh, it's going to probably start getting a little chilly here soon. So I'm probably not going to have too many more trips to the flea market this year. Uh, but yeah, if you, whoa, voice crack. Yeah. <laughs> if you like the video, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And until the next one, see ya.